right, in this video, let's talk about three new camera to cloud updates that we saw at NAB from Atomos, Frame.io, and Teradek. Real quick, you're watching Video Brand. Special thanks to our sponsors that helped make our NAB coverage possible. Got Massive, which is really handy for sending really large files very quickly. Metricool, which we use to schedule out all of our social media and use it as our social media dashboard. OpenReel, which helps create marketing videos really fast and easy. Adspective, which you can use to dynamically insert ads using AI into videos. And Vestigit, which adds invisible watermarking to videos. You can learn more about all our sponsors down in the description below. And now back to the video. All right, so we're back from NAB. We've been posting a bunch of videos. You can check them all out over here in this playlist, but I wanted to cover some specific updates in camera to cloud in this video. And one of the companies that had the most interesting updates in the camera cloud space was Atomos. So one of their main things is they have Atomos Cloud Connect. Now that wasn't new at this NAB, but the idea with that Cloud Connect is it's the online hub platform that you can connect all of Atomos's Wi-Fi internet enabled devices. And from there, you can either connect to Frame.io or Sony C, Sony's Cloud Connect feature. That was a new update that they released at NAB, or you can also do some other interesting things. And so one of the main things that they launched at this year's NAB is now you can upload your proxies from your Atomos device, your monitor, your camera's connected to your monitor, your monitor is both recording the high quality or original camera signal and then creating a proxy file and uploading it to the cloud. And one of the things that you can now do in the cloud with Atomos Cloud Connect is edit. So you can take those proxy files and start collaboratively editing with them. You have multiple people editing, leaving notes, and then you can either publish directly to YouTube or Vimeo from Atomos Cloud Connect. So you can take your XML file, send it to Premiere or Final Cut, and now you already have your rough cut ready to go and you can relink it to your original files, uh, but you're already ahead of the game in editing. And the cloud editor is because it's web-based and in the cloud, anyone in the world can be collaborating on that edit. So you could have multiple people collaborating on that edit and reviewing, annotating, the, commenting on it. And you, from our new uh, Atoms Cloud edit, you can then publish directly to social media like YouTube and Vimeo. Okay. As well as, if you wanted to go more to a craft editor, you can then publish you can export to Final Cut or Premiere. And the other cool feature that they announced as well is uh, segment uploads. And so this applies whether you're sending it to Frame.io or you're just going into Cloud Connect directly. Segment uploads is now if you're recording, let's say, an interview, like a long file that's 30 minutes, it is segmenting the file into smaller bits and uploading them in sections. So by the time you hit stop recording, it's not starting the, pro the proxy upload from that moment that you stop recording, it's already been uploading segments of the proxy upload. So by the time you stop recording, most of the file has already been uploaded and it just finishes it off. And so really big files now appear in near real time as soon as you stop recording. As you're actually recording, that file is already going up into Atomos Cloud Studio. And then the second you finish, the client file just gets closed off. And then with, with, within, within a couple of minutes, what could be an hour's take, will appear in Frame.io. Now the interesting thing with proxies or proxies is you have your original file recording and then you're generating your proxy file, but the encoders on the Atomos devices are so good, you can do up to 30 megabits per second, which is a pretty high bit rate. And if you're going to web, that's kind of like good enough to go to web. And so I had an interesting chat with uh, Paul Scarell from Atomos about how this is sort of like a middle ground. It's really not a proxy because it's pretty high quality, but obviously it's not the original camera. Uh, file, but there is sort of a middle ground of like how useful these new files are. And so here is this clip of us talking about that. But I guess what we've done with some of the updates for incre increased resolution and bit rates on the file that goes up to the cloud is that a lot of people now are actually using that file as their master file. It's, oh, really? it, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be regarded as a proxy file because you can have, you know, we, on our, some of our paid plans where you have up, to, you know, custom rates that you can set, you could set to 30 megabit per second, H.265, super high quality file. And so it's sort of this middle ground file of usefulness and some of the things that we talked about of ways that you could use it was if you're just pulling clips for social media, or you're pulling clips to share on TikTok or Instagram, having that Cloud Connect, you can pull clips, especially from live events and stuff right away, have access to them and then start posting them on social media in near real time. We imagine that people will be using it and the feedback we've got is that people will be using it to get a high quality HD HD60 file, you know, nice, nice bit rate H265 file, edited quickly, packaged up, clipped, 
some nice graphics. I thought Atomos, out of all of the companies we're covering here, had some of the most interesting updates in the camera to cloud space and some of the most exciting updates. Some of the other things too, it's not really in the camera to cloud space, but they also with the Cloud Connect Studio uh, have a lot of live streaming features. So you can take remote cameras, have them all stream their signals to Cloud Connect, regardless of their location, as long as there's an internet connection. And then you could do a live stream mix remotely and stream out for multiple cameras. So the live production is using the same Connect hardware, but this time that can be a live input to in-cloud production, as in a whole production suite, vision mixer, sound mixer, talkback, tally, graphics, overlays, all of that in the cloud. And this is now camera two in a live production. The operator here, if they plugged in a headset, they would have talk back, they'd be able to hear program sound, they could talk back to the director, they've got tally. It's literally like an instant outside broadcast without any of the external kit that would normally be in an outside broadcast truck. It's a lot of like pro-level features that you would find in like a big mixer type setup, but it's all being done remotely via the cloud. All right, uh, next company, Camera to Cloud Updates, sort of the company that created the camera, the idea of the Camera to Cloud workflow, Frame.io. <laughs> I wouldn't say there were too many uh, exciting updates in the video space with Camera to Cloud. Their main update was Camera to Cloud now rolls out to still cameras, and so you could do still photos, uh, have that same workflow. You take the photo, in this case, you could get the original file because it's not that big uh, in video terms. You take the photo, take a picture, and then it instantly uploads to Frame.io, and so you could have your team remotely start editing the photo. Obviously, good use case in sports or live events, uh, stuff like that. Now, the thing with this, though, unlike video where you can get a third-party device like a Teradek or an Atomos and attach it to any camera and enable camera to cloud. With still photos, you can't just plug an attachment into your still photo camera, so it needs to be built into the camera. So right now, uh, it's just in some Fuji uh, camera models. The X-H2 and the X-H2S have Frame.io built in, and that also applies if you're recording video. You can get the same benefit of having proxy files of your video generated and is already built inside the camera. So ideally, you would hope that this gets rolled out more into, uh, built into more camera manufacturers. And I feel like we're going to see more, whether they include Frame.io or not, we're going to see more Wi-Fi and internet connectivity enabled in more cameras as they come out, because that's sort of becoming the standard. Now, the most interesting thing out of Frame.io was the chat I had with Adobe's head of innovation, Michael Sioni, uh, where we talked a lot about AI and what the future is going to bring in regards to not just to Adobe, but to creative work uh, in general and creating images, recording images versus uh, typing in and generating images. Uh, so here's a clip from that, but also check out the full interview. Absolutely. Look, a AI is, is going to be the most polarizing bloodbath of the last 20 years. It's gonna be really incredible. It's gonna happen really fast. And there's gonna be people on all sides of these issues. Adobe's really building um, a system Firefly that is a generative AI solution. And that's part of our ability to make sure that there's copyrights considered with that, provenance. But you still have to recognize that this is an inevitability, right? Mm -hmm. And so what everyone has to think about, my advice to cinematographers and photographers, creatives in general, is to really recognize that an enormous percentage of images today that are shot or recorded is going to go down. The percentage of things that are photographed or recorded in the world for productions is going to go down. Now news and sports is different because you can't generate news and sports. Um, but when it comes to narrative and elements like that, there's going to be a big change. And so you want to position yourself at businesses and companies and technologies that really support a world where we're going to be able to generate so much more than we could possibly imagine. All right, and then last company is Teradek. Teradek makes devices. Big use case is having wireless video signals monitoring on set. But also a lot of these devices now can connect to the internet and so you can send that video signal from your camera. And then now you can have people all over the world monitoring video signals remotely or with some of the devices you can integrate and upload your proxy files. It can create proxy files from the camera and then upload it to Frame.io or Teradex core system or route it out to uh, wherever other camera to cloud services you want. Um, Nothing kind of new there. The big thing that was new is a device called the Link AX, and this is basically a rugged high-end router. So the Link AX is a Wi-Fi 6 router, um, essentially the same as any other kind of router you could get. 
but we've made this router more ruggedized, ready for production. So it has gold mount or V-mount battery plates. It has um, quarter twenty and three eighths mounting points. It's a rugged, you know, aluminum design. So it's, you know, if you drop it, if you, you know, it's going to stand the test of production, right? Um, so that's going to allow you to pull all of your cameras into one router. And so the first thing you can do is connect to a local network, or it, it is the local network. Mm -hmm. So you can connect iPads or iPhones to that network. You can connect up to 20. So maybe it's a hair and makeup or a local producer. Okay. Have like they can watch around. monitoring, yeah. yeah. And so they can watch from one network. They can see all the different cameras that are on set. And then you can also, if you are in a studio or something, you can connect it to internet, and then you can go to Teradek Core, and then anyone that has access can monitor any of the camera feeds on set remotely, regardless of what location they're at. And if you don't have internet connectivity, they have another new device called the Teradek Node, which is a little 5G or 4G box router that plugs into the node and then gives you data access. And then also what's really cool and, and brand new is we have something called Teradek Data, which is cellular data. So we've worked with, in the United States anyhow, we worked with Verizon and AT&T and other providers so that when you're on, on location, depending on where you are, certain providers may be a better, have better service, right? So our service will automatically switch to whatever service is best okay. in that area. So the idea is it sort of completes the full cycle where you've got the cameras that have connectivity and now you can bring this Wi-Fi router, the link, on set, create a network, and then now you can also connect it to the node, connect it to cellular network, 5G, and stream out from wherever the set is. Anyone else in the world can connect and monitor. And also you can stream your camera to cloud stuff from there. And then this would have been useful in our case when we were filming stuff. The other uh, newish devices came out a little bit before NAB, but it's the Teradek Prism. And so this sort of takes everything we just talked about and rolls it all up into one package. So if you want to have a camera on the go that can connect to 4G or 5D cellular data, you can connect it, it can create proxy files, it can encode the video coming out of the camera, and then it could also remotely connect via Wi-Fi or 4G or 5G uh, and stream, either stream the camera live, people can monitor the camera feed, it can connect to Frame.io, pretty much any type of internet connectivity thing that you want. This thing has four SIM card slots on it. So that is the Teradek Prism. Not new at this thing, but new-ish enough. Very, very handy device. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it in the Camera to Cloud update space. Uh, there's also some updates from uh, Sony C, but we didn't go to that booth. There wasn't anything super, super crazy, uh, but you also will have some links about the info that they updated uh, below in the description so you can check that out. But yeah, Atomos, a lot of cool updates. Uh, Frame.io, check out our, the conversation I had uh, with Mike Sioni. That's definitely the most interesting thing. Uh, and Teradek, a couple options there, a little bit more for the higher end, bigger budgets that are having multiple cameras and internet co connectivity, uh, but still a lot of cool workflow stuff in the camera to cloud space. So thank you for watching uh, our update here. And also, as I mentioned before, we've got all of our NAB videos in our playlist, so be sure to go check that out. And if you like this type of video and more videos like this be sure to subscribe and uh, if you did find this video useful or if you got any questions about the stuff that we covered first like the video and then leave a comment below and let me know what questions you got all right thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next episode